All right, <laughs> what's up, guys? Happy Monday night. Dr. Jaws here, and tonight is the Greenland Shark, and a lot of news. We've got a lot of big updates, um, and it's a, it's really exciting. This is our tenth stream, um, and it's probably the most with or the one with the most follow up. So, um, and I let's see who's here. Uh, can can people comment in the chat? Because we need uh, we specifically need we definitely need. <laughs> there's really big news that I really hope uh, Beth. Howard, Anya, and um, uh, Roy Roy. I, I hope you guys are here because uh, big news involves all you guys. But um, but yeah, so the footage that uh, what I'm waiting for everybody, um, uh, the footage I got rolling in the background is actually the first Greenland shark footage ever. Hey, what's up, Howard? What's up? Happy Monday night. Um, so, so hope you're doing well. Um, there's Anya. Hey, <laughs> what's up? Um, and then we just need Roy Roy and Beth. Um, oh my gosh, a lot of follow up for today. So um, I'm trying to figure out like where to begin. So actually, I guess I guess where I should start out is um, we got some really good news. Uh, we got some yeah, <laughs> happy Shark Night. <laughs> so we got some really good news. Uh, I'm gonna tr just push that back uh, until uh, hope hopefully the other two will be on the stream, but. Um, we'll start with like uh, some slightly like uh, like not bad news, but just kind of like oh, I'm so sorry news. Um, so uh, in America, it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, so it's a holiday day, and I made plans um, to spend some time with my brothers uh, over the weekend, and my brain didn't click that I uh, promised to spend time some time with them tonight, and it's also like the live stream night. So I was like, oh shoot, I, I screwed that up in my head. So um, all that to say, I might be uh, um, uh, ending the stream at around 10-ish maybe. So it might be a, a slightly shorter stream um, than, than usual. So I just, just want to kind of put that out there and I apologize. So, but the good news is gonna buoy that. Roy Roy, what's up, man? So <laughs> what's up? Happy, happy Monday. Um, I was just uh, kind of telling the group that I might be ending the stream a little bit earlier tonight, um, but we got some exciting news. We'll give Beth like a couple minutes, and because um, she's usually on, but like uh, if she's not on, uh, we, we could just kind of go ahead with some exciting news. So, um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot to catch up on. Um, I think we should talk about uh, art. So we got multiple submissions for the contest. Uh, so thank you guys for submitting. They were all really, really good. Um, and what's really exciting is like they're all accurate like like they're all very like like sharks are hard to draw like I'm not even joking like they're very hard to draw uh, they're very hard to get right in terms of the proportions of the fins and also just like the body shape and trying to communicate that like girth in some places and thinness in other places so all the submission no <laughs> no worries Roy no worries so um, so yeah, like all the submissions were great and like um, please feel free like uh, everybody can keep submitting art um, I, I know like a lot of YouTube channels like to submit uh, or like like have art and like to showcase art and uh, yeah yeah feel free feel free to um, s send some because like like uh, basically with the submissions that I'm receiving I do want to feature them um, each stream and each week so um, like uh, we have a winner for this week but if your art is not shown this week, it's going to show up next week. And why is there an ad? Oh my gosh, I need an ad blocker. Get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Uh, this is a good opportunity to talk about. Uh, Adrian Von Ziegler uh, is the music we're listening to tonight. Um, oh, I should subscribe to him. Uh, I highly recommend subscribing. But um, if you ever need study music, um, and it's kind of more of like a Celtic... Uh, Viking dark fantasy vibe uh, that's a really good channel so that's the music we got tonight I thought the um, uh, the Viking music would be good for the Greenland shark so but anyway so uh, tonight's winner for the art contest is Anya so um, I'm just I hope you guys yep yeah you guys can see that so uh, Anya Velotion thank you for submitting the great hammerhead uh, this is super super cool um, and for, for all the all the art pieces um, submitted, uh, I do want to take a moment to talk about certain features that I really love. But um, like specifically, I really love the detail on the cephalofoil. This looks so good, um, and like like I can I feel like I could actually hold that, you know, which is really cool. And I love the eye. The eye. I love this the expression on, on this. So 
Um, but like like that saffle foil is really really cool. There's like subtle shading here and there that is like capturing that that um, um, like that shape. Like like because there is like like a little bit it like like this area is a little bit more fleshy. This area is a little bit more thin. So well done. Thank you for this great hammerhead. Uh, critically endangered species. Super 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 cool submission. So thank you. So all right. So I think let's pull up some fossils really quick because the big news I have is fossil related so fossilguy.com megalodon okay okay uh, I just want to sorry shout out to fossilguy.com because you know super super cool website and I think we'll have pictures of Meg teeth as kind of a nice thing for um <laughs> Um, like, like, it's kind of a nice thing for this news. So, um, and this, this is, this, this is news for everyone. It starts with a weird story. Um, I went, uh, shark tooth hunting, uh, this weekend and I came back with a really, a really nice, um, what is this? This is Carcanon either Hastalis or, um, Plicatellus. And um, I came back with this tooth. Uh, it's the biggest tooth I've ever found uh, from the James River. And uh, I really you know, got excited about it. And I posted it on my like private social media. And someone saw it and sent me the following message, which pertains to everybody. So here we go. And this like, literally got like was sent today. So, uh, all right. So this is an old, <laughs> yeah, th th thanks Roy. Yeah, no, I, I really love this. So, um, this is an old college buddy of mine, um, so uh, from, from William and Mary. Um, so he was um, talking about how you know we're doing a lot, you know, like like with Dr. Jaws, like sharks and like outreach and, and everything. And uh, he is a paddy dive master who does a lot of frequent diving, collecting artifacts and fossils in uh, Cooper River near Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and I'm just reading what he sent me, but um, as a result, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of fossilized shark teeth from various species, but predominantly Megalodon. I can't commercially sell them, but I don't need them to just sit in boxes. Could you find a good educational use for a steady supply of fossils? And I said, of course I can. So, uh, what I'm going to do is um, I've accepted the offer to collect the teeth and what I want to do for you guys, because you guys have been awesome, and um, this has just been such a great thing, like a great community and a great project. Um, I, I would love to hold, like, like have tea for contest, but for for you guys, you four guys specifically, I do want to send Meg teeth, um, and and with like a personalized note, kind of from the channel um, to each of you guys. So you guys are getting Megalodon teeth, uh, which is which is the big news for the night. Um, and also a small apology for me, maybe like like I, ha I might have to duck out of the stream like around ten, so I apologize for that. But yes, Meg teeth for the Dr. Jaws community. So here is how you get your Meg tooth. Um, please go ahead, uh, go to drjaws.net and just uh, submit your um, contact information in the forum. Um, please include your address so I can mail these. Um, to clarify, I do not have the box of teeth yet, so um, they are on their way. Um, it's probably going to take like a couple weeks for um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, dude, like, you guys are awesome. Like you, you guys absolutely, absolutely, like like I, I yeah, I'm saying the love, man. So you guys are awesome. So I'm just reading the comments and catching up. So th this is great. Thanks, guys. So. Um, so yeah, uh, please go ahead and um, just uh, uh, punch in your address. Um, it will take me a couple weeks to get the box of teeth my way, and then um, it's going to probably take a couple weeks for shipping. Oh, <laughs> uh, for sure. I, I'm just I'm just catching up on the comments. Thanks, thanks, Howard. I will I will absolutely um, hit, like his name is Graham. This is my uh, buddy Graham. So I will uh, thank him on uh, for for you guys. Um, I'll share the stream too because like like just so he can see like how exciting this is. So, um, but yeah, uh, please go ahead and uh, put your address. Uh, it will probably take a couple weeks uh, between me getting the box and then organizing everything and sending them over. Um, but yeah, I, oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh my gosh, I, dude, guys, I'm, I'm thrilled. And like, I don't, I don't have any Meg teeth, so I'm, I'm totally gonna maybe like keep one or two, but like, but yeah, like, like, you know, I, it's just, 
riches for all of us to share. Um, so, and I think uh, we'll 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 do some future uh, Meg Teeth giveaways. You know, I think they'll be a lot of fun. But for you four guys specifically, uh, I'll, I I gotta reach out to Beth somehow. Um, but for you guys, four guys specifically, uh, you guys have been here for so many of the streams already. So I I, I no matter what, I just want you guys to have the teeth. So. Um, please go ahead and put your contact information and um, I'll go ahead and send them and again it'll probably take like uh, let's say a month conservatively <laughs> between me getting the teeth and me being able to ship it um, and but probably probably sooner than that so so we'll see them at some point in February I think so there's that uh, for future viewers watching in the far future, I may or may not have Meg Teeth left. I don't know. If you could use the same forum and write a cool shark haiku, then I may consider sending teeth that I may or may not have to you for the future viewer. But for my present viewers, yeah, for sure, guys. Like, so you guys are getting Meg Teeth. So, <laughs> so that's the big news. Um, and also, just like fun fact, I thought, um, I thought I had a Meg in my hand, and I didn't realize this. Um, it's this, like, like the reason this, the tooth that I have in my hand is not a Megalodon, is this burlet feature, which is I think unique to Megalodon, and I think you guys are, are more um, uh, experienced with fossils than I am. So let, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but like, so most sharks' teeth. I guess, uh, I guess this included, they just have like the enamel, the crown, and like the enamel or the crown, and then the root. But Megalodon teeth have the enamel, crown, uh, root, and then this intermediary feature, which I think is called a burlet, um, or barrette, or I, if, forgive me if I, if I got that wrong. So, and it's, it's cool seeing these right here, where it's like, once, once you kind of see it, it's like you can't unsee it. It's like, oh, okay, then, then Meg teeth, I guess, are kind of easier to find. And I verified uh, the photos. Um, Graham sent me photos of the teeth coming your way, and they are all Megs. So, <laughs> like, like I am assured they are Megs. So, um, but yeah, so that's a new thing I learned about this fossil shark. So, oh, uh, hope you guys have a good snack tonight. I've got what I got: hot cinnamon spice tea. Uh, this is a new flavor. I'm usually not a cinnamon guy, but it's actually really good. So. Um, I'm just taking a sip because it's like, ugh, I need to calm down. So much excitement. So, <laughs> ooh, uh, some of it uh, cousins to like uh, Auriculatus, uh, Anguistidens, and Chibin, uh, tenses uh, all have the burlet. Awesome. So, like, are they, okay, so those are cousins. Are they, um, like, uh, how are they in, like, the same genus or, it, like, the same family? Or, um, like, I'm curious, like, like, what the relationship is between those species and i know i know with like like the paleontology it's so um like debated uh but, but I'm, I'm curious because i don't know i don't know any of those species so that that's super cool um so so at the very least I, i'm assuming it's like the same group maybe um and hope it is so um and like uh the nice thing is the teeth from South Carolina, um, I know those are Megs. Like, like I know Gram Grandma showed me those are Megs. Um, so, because, like, he... What does he do again? Uh, dive Master... I'm sorry, I'm catching up on those messages. PhD Dive Master, but I forget. I, I don't think he specified what he did. So, same genus. Atotus! Oh, Atotus is cool. Sorry, I just saw that comment about Atotus. So, Atotus is, like... That's, like, the oldest one, right? Um, cause I think I was trying to find one in a, uh, a ligacine, uh, deposit in the Potomac, but, um, cause it had a lot of, like, sand tiger teeth, but, um, I don't know. But, like, I think a, to a totus is one of the oldest, like, mega, I, I don't know if you call them, like, mega tube sharks, but, like, megalodon-like sharks. Uh, they, like, I know, I've seen that name. It's... Plus, it's such a cool name, a totus. So, <laughs> I'm gonna just monitor the chat for a little bit, and then we'll dive into the Greenland shark in a little in, in a second too, because um, I think, I mean, it's not really fossil related, but it's like a totus goes way back. Okay, cool. Yeah, that is super. Actually, I am super curious now. Uh, does fossil guy have a totus? Just kind of curious. Where are uh control find is my friend. Atotus. Oh, wait. Oh, he's like using it as like a synonym. 
A toad is Carcrocles Megalodon. Wait a minute. Is that used correctly? Because I thought a toad was its own thing and it's older. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. Most paleontologists believe the megatooth shark lineage dates back to the giant mackerel shark of the Paleocene, Atodus. Okay, I got my timeline wrong. Let me go back to my handy timeline on the thing. Paleocene. Oh, Paleocene's super old. Okay. Guys, I am so, I am so glad I, I have this, like, fossil shark timeline, because it's like, I, I get my geological errors, like, mixed up all the time. So, okay. Um, Paleocene, Atodus, um, Obliquus. Atodus was the top predator of the Paleocene oceans. Throughout the Eocene, Atodus teeth became more and more serrated. The Eocene Tologasaur? Say that three times in a row. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> this guy, he knows what he's doing. Formation in, in Kazakhstan shows this transition nicely. Um, each zone of the formation has Atodus teeth that are slightly more serrated over geologic time until they start looking like an early Krakocles tooth. I love that name, Krakocles. Uh, once the Atodus teeth became mostly serrated, paleontologists renamed the serrated Atodus genus to the Carcocles genus, and thus the Carcocles genus arose. Where, where the genus transition occurs depends on what paleontologists you ask. For instance, one transitional form, Atodus uh, axuaticus. Ex oh gosh. Ax you could do axuaticus? I guess it would be axuaticus. Okay. It's called, I am so glad I took Latin, by the way. I'm not even joking. For, like, marine science or any kind of science, Latin is very, very helpful. Uh, it is not, even though it's a dead language, it is super helpful. Um, Escuaticus, by some. Uh, others regard C. auriculatus to be o Atodus auriculatus, regardless of which transitional form is officially called. A Carcocles is a moot point. Uh, it is clear that Megatube Shark line lineage Carcocles was born from the Atodus lineage. It's so cool. Uh, Megalodon is not related to the Great White Shark. Their evolutionary lines are very different. To learn about Great White Shark origins or evolution, go to the Great White Shark Gallery. Uh, we'll save that for another day. Over the time, the Megalo uh, Megatooth Shark went through slight morphological changes. The teeth became more regularly serrated, and a totus cusp got smaller, the crown got broader, and the overall size increased. Uh, paleontologists assign each slight tooth change of the Megatooth Shark to a new Carcocle species. Megatooth shark reached its high mark as C. Megalodon, a shark of monstrous proportions. This is so cool. Uh, today is a push by many paleontologists to simplify the entire lineage and call every genera a totus. So today one can hear a totus megalodon or cococles megalodon, depending on which paleontologist one asks. Ooh, th this website is the coolest thing. A very rough chronology of megatooth species leading to the megalodon to show below on the following table. So a totus oblicus is paleocene. Let me go back to my chart. Um, what is that? 66 million years ago, right after the Cretaceous. Eocene is 56. Oligocene is 34. Uh, Atodus mugodzarcus. Mugodzark. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why these names? Mugodzarcus. Okay. Uh, Atodus axiaticus. Oh boy. Uh, Middle Eocene, uh, is that Carcocles? Got that right? That was Carcocles. Okay, Carcocles, sorry. Middle Eocene, Carcocles auriculatus. Um, late Eocene, Oligocene, Carcocles uh, angustitans. Ang um, late Eocene, Oligocene, and Miocene, uh, Carcocles subar auriculatus. And then finally, Miocene, Pliocene, Carcocles, Me Carcocles megalodon. So. This is super cool. Wow, yeah, look how big that is. That's super, oh, look at that. All right, to your point, guys, yeah. So I see there's the burlet on Meg. There's the burlet on Subarculatus. I can see the burlet on Ingostadens. And then sort of maybe, I can't tell. But I think you guys said that, our, our Riculatus, and then Atodus does not have it. That is really cool. Wow. Super, super cool. All right. Well. All right. So that that's a fun blast for the past. Um, I'm curious. Uh, let me know what you guys think if we should do, like, 
a night devoted to fossils. Part of me is torn, because part of me is like, I want to do, like, sharks that are alive now as the primary, and then, because like, we, we usually talk about fossils anyway, so, like, it, it's like we could do sharks as, like, living sharks as a primary, and then, you know, like, fossils naturally flow as as they do. Or we can you we could do like a megalodon night. I I'm not sure. I'm I'm in the middle because like part of it is like I want to bring awareness to living species that need conservation help. But I also uh, like I mean there's so such a wealth of information with the fossil species. Um, I don't know. I, I'm 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 honestly like kind of torn torn about that. So um, let me know let me know what you guys think. Um, also re like one last thing in this section. Take a look at the cusplets. That's one thing that I always thought was cool about Atoda's teeth, is that they have these, like, cusplets on the sides, and they're pretty big as far as uh, cusplets go, and then they sort of fade away when you get to the Megalodon, you know, because, like, this looks like it has a little bit of, like, a nub, but then here, clearly not. So, I, just, I like, evolution is awesome, and it's just, it's just really cool to see these changes. But, anyway. So, tonight... Oh, pick an extant shark and follow its fossil record. Yes, that's awesome. Let's do that. Like, oh, note some of these species may be synonymous. Good, good call, good call. Uh, but yeah, let's do, let's definitely do that. So, um, like, I know, I mean, there's a lot we can we could choose from. Any of the requiem sharks, we can do a fossil record. Uh, I mean, for all the sharks we can, but like, I think requiem sharks, um, mackerel sharks, angel sharks cow sharks um like six six gill seven gill and i think dogfish um those are the most and hammerheads i guess those are the most famous fossils i know of but i again i'm not as good with fossil sharks so but i like this idea uh, extant sharking going backwards in time so um greenland sharks so tonight's shark is greenland shark um for living shark species uh, these, as you can imagine, it's very hard to find footage, and um, I was trying to find, I, like, compile some together, and it's it's hard to get some on YouTube, but it's really cool that a clip from this documentary, which, like, is one of the most, it, it, it's my favorite shark documentary ever, um, and I think it's called The Ultimate Guide to Sharks. It's from 1996. Uh, when I was a kid, like, this was my go-to documentary. I loved this documentary, and it was the best best one I've ever seen, actually. I, I can't think of another shark documentary that has captured my interest as much as this. So, but this was the first footage of the Greenland shark ever, like, 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 like in the world. Um, it was shot by uh, Nick Kalianis, uh, who I believe he actually lives in Maryland. Um, so he is a famous underwater photographer, and there it is! Look at that! So, Somniosis microcephalus, the Greenland shark. <laughs> oh man, it is actually really cool to be watching this same clip now, but... Oh man, beautiful animal, but also like a little scary. It's humongous, as you can see. Like, look, look how it's dwarfing, Nick. That's crazy. Look how big that is. And it's really... Oh, and check out the, uh, I think those are copepods. Um, this shark is famous for having parasites on its eyes. Um, it's, it's a weird thing about this species, and I don't know, we might be able to learn that tonight, like, why it has that. Um... But, uh, yeah, it's really cool seeing such a big shark, but in the in sort of the dogfish order, like it's a squaliform. So, um, it's, as far as our live stream has gone, like it's the closest thing this is related to is the do uh, pike dogfish. So, um, it's kind of, it's, it's just wild. I mean, they're, they're distant really, distantly related, but they're in, they're in the same order. And it's just like kind of wild to see some of those features. Like, like there's no anal fin. Um, the, fins are kind of more like square shape looking like like a little bit more broad and squaliforms are more classically deep water sharks and this this is a really good uh, oh there's there's a there's a shot of the copepod on the eye um and it's i don't know if all sleeper sharks kind of have this going on but this is something this this happens so often with this species that um it's it's 
it's not a anomaly uh, for an individual. It's it's, it's something that kind of happens. It, 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 it's something that's like kind of distinctive for the species. It kind of reminds me of like you know how right whales have the callo. I think the callocytes or the callo. I forget what it's called, but like on their on their nose. Um, it's it's it reminds me of that a little bit. So. Oh, it's so cool. Hey, it's got a little keel, kind of. Look at that. Like, it's very subtle, but there is a little bit of a caudal keel on this. Very cool. Alright. <laughs> it's so cool. Let's switch to... There's a couple other clips that caught my eye. I think when I went backward. There we go. This is a good one. And I'm just checking the comments really quick, so. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so, uh, so Anya, it's, it, it, so for the stream, it's, um, it's the closest shark in the stream we've talked about is the dogfish to the Greenland shark. But that doesn't mean, they're, they're, they're not close, close, but they're in the same order. So they're closer than... Like, the Greenland shark and the dogfish are closer to each other than they are to, like, we talked about sand tigers, poor beagles, uh, bull sharks. Um, they're closer to the, each other than those species, so. Um, I don't know, and then Royal Roy, I don't know why the copepods are attracted to its eyes, and it's so odd where it's specifically this species, so. Oh, that's a good guess, Sonya. Uh, the thinnest tissue? I don't know. Oh, they apparently start at the tail and gradually climb to the eye. Interesting. I did not, ooh, I did not know that. Ooh, ooh. By the way, if you're ever interested in studying sharks, uh, parasitology is a big field. Uh, it's almost shocking to me how big shark shark parasitology is, but there's a lot of research um, and a lot of opportunities for research uh, as far as like shark parasites go. It's kind of wild. I mean, you, you, it's one of those things I don't think people would really think of, but like, it's a big field. Like, I mean, there's a lot, um, a lot of research on parasites for, for a lot of different shark species. So, now this clip is really cool because I've seen a still from this used in NOAA. Um, and also, the clips that we just watched, I think they're like, uh, these are not YouTube submissions. These are like, I should probably zoom up so we can't see, well, we can't hide that channel. Anyway, um, the, I think these are like official, the one clip was like Discovery Channel that probably shouldn't be on YouTube. This is, I think, Noah that probably shouldn't be on YouTube, but like, you know, we're, we're watching it, so. Hmm. Cool little fact. Somniosidae sleeper sharks. I think there's four or five species. We've got Pacific sleeper shark. Um, there's one, the sofa? No, wait a minute. There's one, there's a weird one with a funny name. I'm just gonna look that up really quick. But isn't it mind blowing that, like, right now, these are in the deep? You know? Like, like, just, just right now. Like, right now, as, as we're, we're talking, like, this is swimming in the dark abyss. Like, well, maybe not the abyss, but, like, the dark like mesoplagic mi like twilight zone midnight zone this humongous animal <laughs> I, I i love it i just think it's crazy all right so we've got okay i got this wrong uh the weird one i was thinking of is the frog shark so there's a cousin to the shark called the frog shark so and i think i was right there's four four to five sleeper shark species but one of them is the frog shark so Ooh. <laughs> this is so cool with the Viking music. This is so cool. So I've heard this eats kind of anything. Oh. Uh, Greenland sharks are cold-loving deep water species. The North Atlantic Arctic Ocean, their flesh is toxic due to high concentration of trimethylamine oxide used for osmoregulation and to prevent ice forming is ooh i think howard you pointed that out I, I i think that was last week you pointed out that that's like the antifreeze 
molecule. It's super cool. But I was about to say, I think these go after a lot of different animals. It kind of reminds me of like, sort of like how a tiger shark goes after a lot of different things. I mean, you know, I mean, just like eats a lot of different things. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's been a lot found in Greenland sharks' stomachs. And like, including like terrestrial animals, but like, you know, it, 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 not like actively hunting those. Like, I'm sure like a weird scenario where like somehow a deer fell in the water or something. Slow moving opportunistic predator eats mostly fish and vertebrates, scavengers and seals. Pull wait, 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 wait. And we gotta, we do gotta cross reference that because it's just, oh, but this is, this is, well. Wait, 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 wait. I did not just read that this thing eats polar bears, did I? Did we just see that? Is that real? Does this eat polar bears? Okay, scavengers on seals, polar bears, whales, and reindeer. I've heard of reindeer before. It's turned preyed upon by the sperm whale. And man. Okay. Alright, so this eats dead polar bears. Gotcha. That's still wild. I've never heard of a polar bear eating shark. That's crazy. Uh, I've definitely heard the reindeer thing before. Um, I don't know if these texts are from Noah. I'm sure they're not. Um, they're probably from this YouTube channel. So we got to take it with a grain of salt. But I've definitely heard the reindeer thing before. Like that reindeer have been found in the shark's stomach. So that part is true. So we, you yeah. know, near threatened. This is probably out of date because I, th I thought this was a vulnerable species. All footage from no office and no exploration research. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Noah's. I, and we're cheating too. We shouldn't be watching it, but like, it's, it's too good. Oh, man. What an animal. So, all right, let's check the, I, that's what I thought. So this is a vulnerable species, but, um, oh, I mean, I think it binds on episodes. Oh, this is so cool. And moose. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys, I'm just catching up on the comments. That is so cool. Uh, I think it binds to enzymes to keep the actocytes in the correct shapes for molecular function. This is so cool. Wow, this shark is crazy. Alright. So Greenland shark. Vulnerable. Um... I want to check the range on IUCN, and then I actually do want to kind of learn some general facts about the species from Florida Museum Natural History, but um, let's do the range of IUCN first, because I think this is fascinating. So this shark, I know in this part of the world, um, this it lives in deep water, uh, like like in the warmer, or the, like the uh, lower latitudes. And then when you get higher and higher and higher, it transitions more into into like a coastal habitat. So, um, and I'm assuming that's something to do with the water temperature. Its optimal temperature is cold, but it's cool to see that. Um, that's kind of it's wild. It's like uh, you can find it down in Florida, um, in deep water areas. Actually, uh, where's Puerto Rico is too, too far away. Um, the, the deepest part of the Atlantic is over here in um, near Puerto Rico, by the way. So, um, so I was just curious if it was going to go into that trench. Looks like it doesn't go that far. But anyway, so you can find this shark um, in deep waters along the American Atlantic coast, the Canadian Atlantic coast, in Greenland, its namesake. Um, the Laurentian, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the Laurentian Shield or the Canadian Shield? Uh, or actually, no, that's a mountain range, right? I don't know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, all in the Arctic. All in Scandinavia. Oh, yeah, dude, we, we chose the right music. Viking music for this. All in Scandinavia, Iceland, uh, British Isles, Ireland, Northern European Seas. That's a really, that's a really cool distribution. I, I, I think I said on the last stream, but, like, Arctic sharks blow my mind. It's, 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 you, you think of sharks typically as a tropical animal and just to have something like this be in such freezing water, like a, a shark like this swimming under ice, it, it's just so, so cool. Um, let's, 
learn. Oh, this is the wrong website, but that's a nice picture of the species. Oh, by Andy Merck, a Lasma diver. Awesome, awesome. Let's learn about the Greenland shark. So, they've found it in Belize, really? Uh, same species? Really? Like, let me slip that up. I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, Somniosis. Microcephalus, please. Because I know there's multiple kinds of sleeper sharks. What? What? Greenland shark discovered in Belize. Oh, uh, she's pretty famous. Melissa Christa, uh, Christina Marquez. That's weird. Really? It makes sense, I guess, because it's like, you know, deep water habitat compared to Shallow water habitat is relatively stable, but like, that's... Is it really the Greenland shark? No, oh, get out of here, Ad. What was this doing? Um, Forbes, I sort of trust-ish. Oh, gosh, except for all these ads. Get out of here. Okay. But that's that's crazy. For, Forbes, I sort of... I'm like, okay, they're, they're not... They're not a goofball journalist, so that's pretty interesting. <laughs> and also, Melissa... Melissa uh, what am I saying? Melissa Christina... She, she's a legit shark scientist, so that's actually wild. That's so, so cool. No, I never, no idea. This <laughs> is like, wow, that's crazy. Um, on a note, um, so to kind of call out IUCN Red List, they are, I would say, 90% accurate as far as the range maps go. It looks like the Belize discovery is not incorporated yet. Um, that's not surprising, but um, they this is still mostly very, very accurate. So um, I like, 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 you know, just because it's not showing up on this map, um, not a big deal for IUCN Red List. They're mostly, mostly accurate, but that's a really cool discovery. Did not know that. So super, super cool. Um, let's see. There's a doc called the Corkscrew Killer off Sable Island about the Greenland. Caribbean. Caribbean? Wow. This is, wow, so cool. Um, let's see, let's learn some things. Uh, slow swimmer likely ambushes its prey and scavenges for carrion. Gloomish shark's flesh is poisonous, uh, but can be eaten once it's dried. Uh, because it's cold water habitat where humans normally wouldn't swim, it is considered no harm to people. Good to know. Ooh, I like these names. Um, other than its most familiar name is the Greenland shark, the Somniosis microcephalus has also been referred to as the sleeper shark, ground shark, gray shark, and gurry shark in English speaking, uh, speaking countries. Inter internationally, it's referred to as. Oh. There's a lot of different names. I won't, I won't say them all, but. I like this one though, Spanish. Tiburon Boreal. Uh, Tolo Boreal, Boreal, like Borealis, like Northern. That's pretty cool. This is a cool name. Uh, Iqualuquac. Canadian names. So interesting. Um, the dry meat is widely used in Northern regions for sled dog and occasionally human consumption. Interesting. Um, Eskimos, for instance, use the dried skin as leather for boots, and the lower dental bands of the shark as knives, primarily for cutting hair. Whoa! Its flesh contains high concentrations of urea and tri trimethylamine oxide, which induces an intoxicating alcoholic effect. As a result, the natives of Greenland are known to call someone who is drunk shark sick. Moreover, dogs that have been poisoned by the shark's meat are often called drunk. Okay, guys, if I am ever feeling silly, you know, for, like, a potentially alcoholic reason, I'm going to just say shark sick. That's so cool. <laughs> I love cultural, like, nuances like that. That's so, so cool. Okay, yeah. Shark sick. That's, that is the new term. So. <laughs> oh. According to the International Shark Attack file, ISAF, uh, there's only been one reported attack of the Greenland shark on a human. Around 1859, in Pond Inlet, Canada. Where is that Pond Inlet? Oh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, Pond Inlet, Canada. Uh, so there's 
Wisconsin Airport. I have to be, have to be very, very careful, very careful things. I think I messed up my audio, audio, audio like this last time. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm using too much, too much, too much bandwidth. bandwidth. But, but. Uh, this, uh, this, this is super, super, super far north. north. Okay, this okay. Is, this I got you. I got you. All right, all right. Interesting, interesting. Um, um, this report is reported that a shark was caught in the human, human, human leg in the stomach. However, the story was merely reported and was never sniper sighted, investigated, and proven. The lack of water attached may be due to the shark's habitat, which is too cold to be populated by human swimmers, therefore, significantly reducing the chance of an attack on a human. Interesting, interesting. Conservation will probably leave to ice and rivers. Mm hmm. Talked about distribution. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god, the Greenland shark is drunk, holding, can't see. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you eat too much of the fresh meat, you will go blind and or die. Yikes. Oh man. Crazy, crazy. Uh, also, okay, like, story time. Um, like speaking of going blind uh when i was like looking for this tooth the other day uh i it was freezing cold out um and i, ha I had a really long week i was very tired by the end of the week so um and it was like th freezing cold out like 30 degrees fahrenheit i would say um but i was like yeah it's a great day to go shark tooth hunting because no one else will be on the beach and like i got super 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 cold and there was a point when i got back home i went shark tooth hunting saturday and like I opened up my computer and like everything was like looking a little blurry and I was like oh I guess my contacts are kind of weird and then I took my contacts out and then I realized it was still blurry it's like oh my gosh it's my eyes <laughs> like I think I I think I got overtired or something but like I I was having a little bit of trouble seeing for a little bit which is strange I've never had that happen before so I think, think I think in the name we have to go far in the name of discovery, but I think I think I kind of pushed myself on Saturday. It was it was it was freezing out. It was way too cold, and I and also not a good day to be on a beach, you know, near the water, splashing your legs. <laughs> like probably not a good idea. So story time over. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Shark ranges in depth from uh, zero to 1,200 meters, and temperatures to 34 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep, I was in Greenland. Shark temperature. Uh, 1 to 12 degrees Celsius. In the north, the shark migrates near shore in search of warmer waters. Interesting. Oh, the, yeah, no, I, I think I said something like that. It is usually spotted near the surface during the winter and retreats the depths of 591 to, or sorry, 180 to 550 meters during the summer. Interesting. In the southern waters, the shark is found near continental shelves and slopes and is found at a depth of about uh, 1,200 meters. Ooh, in 1988, an unmanned submarine spotted a six meter long green, uh, male Greenland shark at a depth of 220 meters at the wreck of the SS Central America, which sank off the coast of Savannah, Georgia in 1857. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm a freak out if I saw that. So cool. Um, Paul, by the way, I, I would love to do a deep, deep, deep sea dive, like be in one of those uh, like bathospheres or subs i would love to do that i seriously would love to do that how do you guys feel about doing that like like would you guys um yeah <laughs> thanks roy i i needed that nap i definitely did <laughs> um but how do we how would you guys feel about doing that like like going down like in in like if you if you could be on one of those subs like like one of those like james cameron subs or like it's not a really good example but like um, the Alvin, or uh, that's probably even a worse example. Um, but like one of those subs. Okay, Roy's down. You know, like uh, I'm asking because like I, I think um, in one sense it would be kind of creepy and claustrophobic, um, and then in another sense it would be awesome. So I'm totally down. I'm I'm totally down to do that. So, but um, it would be a freaky experience. But I'm I'm totally down. Full of <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> like, like, uh, it's funny, I, I don't, I don't think I've said this on the stream, the Central America wreck? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, the SS Central America. Uh, let's look that up. I don't know the ship, uh, shipwreck. Uh, let's trust Wikipedia, known as the Ship of Gold. Good call on ya. 
Whoa, what is this? Uh, 80, uh, it was an 85 meter side wheel steamer that operated between Central America and East Coast of the United States. Okay, why is it called the Ship of Gold? Wreck Golden Artifacts. Significant amounts of gold and artifacts were recovered and brought to the surface by another ROV built specifically for the recovery. A hundred and hundred fifty million! Whoa, that's really cool. Okay. This is this would be a great story! Oh my gosh, like the ship of gold and there's a Greenland shark, like around that wreck. Uh, that's so cool. Wow, interesting. Good call on you. I I had no idea that was a thing. I had no I had no idea that was a thing. This is so so cool. Ma'am. Um what was I saying? Uh oh. Uh I was I was just about to say, like, sorry, I, I had no idea. I read a book about it, it's famous. Yeah, I had I had never heard of this. Like this this is super super cool. That's the Central America. Man, that is so so cool. Because it's like, um, I was thinking about Famous Shipwrecks recently, because um, I'm working on like a novel project, and I was trying to name like Famous Shipwrecks, and the only two like I got, a, I, I kind of came out with, with like a, a a sort of like pop understanding is like Queen Anne's Revenge and Titanic, um, but this one, SS Central America is super, super cool. Like, I, I had no idea that that was a thing, so cool, cool story. Uh, let's see. Uh, 1,000 meters deeper than the maximum reported depth of the shark, and uh, ooh, uh, 440 kilometers south of its southernmost sighting in North Carolina. Very cool. Uh, biology. Um, let's see. Don't really well. Large, heavy set body, which gives a sluggish appearance of movement. Short, rounded snout. Thin lips, very small eyes. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it lacks spines in its dorsal fins. I mean, that, that's not a surprise, I guess, but it's interesting because, you know, dogfish have those spines, and this is like a distant cousin. So it's actually, that that's cool. I didn't realize that. It does not have the spines. Coloration, dentition... This is an interesting row of teeth because this is acting more like, and this this is a lot like the spiny dogfish actually because it's more like a row, like a uh, like um. Uh, I still don't have a good analogy, but like a chainsaw, like like where it's not one tooth doing a lot of work. It's it's the collection of the teeth um, working as like a unit. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the upper teeth are very thin and lack serrations. The lower teeth dissimilarly are interlocking and are broad and square. Very cool. All uh, right, Greenland sharks average size from eight to fourteen feet, with females being the larger sex. Um, I think I said it before, but uh, female sharks typically are larger than male sharks. Like, like uh, that's pretty typical. Uh, this shark reaches maximum length, and, and female sharks, I think, have a thicker skin, too, uh, t typically, so, um, just, just kind of across the board, larger and thicker skin. Um, this shark reaches maximum length of about 21 feet, although may grow up to 24 feet. It's a big animal. Uh, the cold climate causes, causes the shark's growth to be slowed. Interesting. Food habit. This shark's most common food consists of a large variety of ocean dwellers, such as other small sharks, skates, eels, herring, capelin, char, uh, various gadoids, redfish, sculpins, lumpfish. The lumpfish! Oh, why would you eat a lumpfish? It's so cute. Wolffish and flounders. Um, marine mammals such as seals and porpoises are often taken by Greenland sharks despite it being characterized as a very sluggish creature. I'm curious about, uh, yeah, the scenario in which that could happen. That's pretty interesting. I'm wondering if uh, I would be curious. That would be kind of a cool. I don't know how in the world you could ever find that out, but it would be really cool to kind of clock the top speed of this shark because I don't know. Like, if motivated, could this shark move really fast? Maybe. Or conversely, maybe there's scenarios in which a marine mammal is very slow, like cold shock. Uh, I don't know if cold shock is a thing for marine mammals with like the blubber. I don't really know. 
Um, but like maybe a, a sick or ill marine mammal being slow and uh, more likely to be captured. I don't know. I'm actually just thinking out loud. But oh, it's interesting that um, <laughs> Junk Old and Grumpy, what the lump fish do to you? <laughs> Oh, good call. It reminds uh, this cookie cutter dentition. Yeah, it's it's which actually that's a good good observation because it's like it's also a cousin of the cookie cutter, you know, like a uh, uh, distant cousin. Because um, like cookie cutters are Delaceidae, which is the same order. Um, uh, so it's a squaliform. It's it's in its own family. So, but same same order. So very cool. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm catching up on your comment on you. Yeah, like like about the deep sea dive. Yeah, I was I was gonna say earlier. It's funny. Like um, I'm super cool with depth. I am not as cool with height. I I am afraid of heights. I I I am I can fly. I am able to fly. I don't necessarily enjoy flying. <laughs> like I'm very comfortable with depth. You can take me. A thousand meters below the surface, like like that's fine. A thousand meters above the surface is less fine. I don't know why I am I am I am I'm a little bit. I like to be on the ground or in the water. I I'm 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 not. Oh, they take the seals while they're sleeping. Interesting. Ooh, sorry, I'm just catching up on that, Howard. Take this. Ooh, ooh, it's creepy. It's awesome, but creepy. Uh, a few specimens have been even found to contain entire reindeer and parts of a horse. <laughs> This shark is also known to feed off carrion is attracted to ill-smelling meat. They often congregate in large numbers around fishing operations. That's interesting. Nielsen et al., by the way, that's a good, um, that's solid, that's solid shark research. So that's a really cool finding. That's super, super cool. Nielsen, Nielsen's a famous, um, I mean, maybe not, I, I would say maybe they're famous in the shark world. That's a, that's a pretty, I've seen Nielsen multiple times. So that's a, that's a pretty strong name, so... That's really cool. That's really cool. That is so cool. Um, because it, it's like imagine like you're fishing in this area, and you know just like just meters below you is a congregation of Greenland sharks. Like like, ah, oh, it's so cool. Have you? If, I'm sure you guys have seen uh, Blue Planet Two. It's a completely different species, but um, there's a really great shot in Blue Planet Two, and I think it's it is the deep water episode with like the six gill or seven gill sharks um, all eating that sperm whale car carcass. It's wild. It, it is it is wild, wild footage. But I, I, I like that's that's kind of what that's making me think of. You know, I know they're completely different groups like Greenland shark and six gill shark, but um, they have a similar niche, you know, large deep water predators, long body shape. Um, so I can imagine if they congregate, it would look something like that. So, uh, Ovoviviparous, um, did not know that, uh, carries a large number of soft shell eggs, eventually giving birth to full-term embryos. Some eggs have been reported to be as large as goose eggs. I don't know how big a goose egg is, so I will assume that's large. Um, five meter specimens contain, oh, mm, no natural pred- Why? The lumpfish is being called out as the primary victim. Why? There are, no, there are no known natural predators in mature Greenland shark, which is most likely due to its massive size. Here we go. Parasites. Here we go. A common parasite of the Greenland shark is Omatocoida elongata. This copepod attaches itself to the eye of the shark, causing corneal lesions, which lead to impaired vision and even partial blindness. However, this does not significantly affect the shark, since it does not rely on keen vision. On most Greenland shark specimens, usually only one eye is affected by a single female copepod. Some believe that the copepod is bioluminescent, attracting prey for the shark. That is interesting. However, there is no scientific evidence that supports this theory. Interesting. Hmm. That, ooh, that's a good research question. Uh, creepy, but very, very cool. Very, very interesting. Uh, taxonomy... Somniosis pertains to sleep. Oh, like uh, insomnia. Oh, very cool. Insomnia means a lack of sleep, so somniosis means... Okay, interesting. Which describes the shark's sluggish movement, and uh, microcephalus literally means small head. In the past, it's also been referred to as squalus squatina. 
Every, every, everything, uh, every shark on this planet has been called a squalus at one point in its, in its taxonomy. Every shark has been called a squalus. It's, it's, it's so funny when I see it. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So, that's a lot of cool information on this guy. Um, unfortunately, it's getting close to 10 o'clock. Um, I could stay on for a little bit, but I did, I did promise, um, to spend some time with my brothers and, like, you know, I hope they don't, like, jump on the stream, but, like, um, any thoughts, let, let's, let's pull up a couple more things about this shark, but any thoughts for, like, next week's species, like, um, and I'm just, uh, catching up, uh, latch, twist, and pull technique when it comes to feel feeding. That's a that's a cool um, that's a cool comment, Roy. Because uh, one of my on my um, I have a dogfish shark playlist, and like that's something that you can see um, in some of the footage. I think that's from Dibram. Um, uh, some of that like that feeding technique for the dogfish. So super super cool. Uh, when the fishing industry of Canada's east coast collapsed, the Greenland shark began going after pinnipeds. They used to follow the trawlers. Whoa. <laughs> Squalls, carcarious. L literally, like, if you've ever seen uh, the movie Jaws, uh, like, uh, the movie Jaws, Jaws, uh, like, Hooper literally calls the the great white Squalus. You know, it's it's a big Squalus. He literally says it's a big Squalus. And I feel like for the 70s, maybe that's, I guess, what the research was at the time. But it looks, it sounds so ridiculous now. But um, uh, I'm going to see if I can pull up some more Greenland shark stuff. But... Um, any thoughts, um, if you guys have any suggestions for next week's shark, um, I think I have some ideas up my sleeve, uh, just as a backup, but, uh, if you have any, oh, what is going on here? Nope. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the music ended, so, all right, but, um, yeah, uh, leave, leave any comments for next week's shark. Um, I think my backup will be the bonnet head. Um, I'm in a sort of in the bonnet head mood but um any 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 suggestions are absolutely welcome so um squalus carcarius if i can find it but uh greenland shark is vulnerable um i don't know if... actually you know what let's see if this uh, this is sharkreferences.com. Let's see if there's something kind of cool on the main page of sharkreferences.com because we don't really spend a lot of time here. We usually go into like the actual research. So, um, like that. Look at that. Inuit tool, National Museum of Denmark, Copenhagen. So, that's crazy. Ugh, that's actually. So I guess if this is for cutting hair, that's cool. Um, I don't know what this is. It almost looks like a club, which is why I had that reaction of like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be aggressively on the other end. I don't want to be on the other end of that. Like that's very scary. So, um, but I think uh, we were reading earlier, this is for mostly for cutting hair. Look at this. This is almost like a, a handsaw. Wow. Uh, another story time. Um, so, shark teeth. Oh, thank you. All right, bonnet head. Next week will be bonnet head. So, all right. Um, so, uh, another story time because I'm kind of seeing these shark teeth right now. Uh, so, like I used to uh, when I used to work in a shark lab, I had uh, shark jaws. There are like two types of bonnet heads. I like to... Yeah, so there's the uh, bonnet head, bonnet head, like the um, the Sphirna tuburo, and then um, I think the scalp bonnet head is Sphirna Corona? No, Sphirna media. I literally made a video on this. I'm going to embarrass myself. Let's look that up. Um, so, anyway, but I used to clean um, shark jaws in, uh, like, in uh, VIMS, uh, Virginia Institute of Marine Science multitasking and uh, like that whole adage of like sharks teeth being like razor blades is absolutely true because uh, sometimes if I like my hand would slip or if like I kind of like I, like I mean like if I'm trying to like clean part of that jaw and 
I mean, like your hand slips, like like if you if you catch it the wrong way or stuff like that, I literally would get cut by those teeth, and like it is literally that sharp. Uh, it, like and it's amazing. It's you know it's a completely like um, you know it's not a living shark and it's not biting me, but like even the jaws, just no matter what, like like those teeth are wickedly sharp. So um, and I've warned people like whenever I do like presentations and like I let people um, I have a couple jaw sets that I let people touch in presentations, um, but I also warn them, like, you gotta be very careful, because it's like, scalp on the head is Sphirna Corona. Um, you gotta be very careful, because the teeth are sharp, so. Um, all right, so, anyway, um, I think uh, I will have, I'm gonna wrap it up now. I, I know it's a bit of a short stream, and I'm sorry, guys, so, um, but we did learn a lot about the Greenland shark, and uh, let's end on a picture of it. Like I want, I want an actual picture of the shark, not 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 its teeth. Although these are really cool. Uh, there are some good pictures. Come on, we want we want a winning, a winning photo for the end. Ah, oh, okay, this is probably really frustrating. I'm sorry. How do I get out of here? Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay. Oh, yeah, that would have taken forever. A winning photo. The uh, small, a small. <laughs> Hold on. Everything else was huge. <laughs> okay. W winning footage. Winning footage. Here we go. Winning, winning footage. So, anyway. Uh, thanks for joining tonight. Uh, when I will let you guys know the minute I get those Megalodon teeth, and I will be sending them over. Um, again, please log on to the Dr. Jaws website. Uh, just uh, send send your contact information, and um, I will also uh, I'll announce it on the stream when the teeth are ready. But I'll also just uh, reach out to you guys um, via email as well, and uh, just let you know uh, when they're coming. So um, we'll we'll do that. But hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And next week we'll do a full stream with the Bonnet Head uh, Serena Tiburo. Um, but Hope you guys take care and have a really good week and thanks for joining tonight. Uh, and thanks for submitting. Please keep submitting art because we'll feature them um, every 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 stream. So, um, but I will see you guys soon. Have a good one.